Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Yeah, good morning, welcome you all to this uh, next lecture on the inorganic chemistry of life principles and perspectives. Uh, in the previous classes we have learned quite a few things, uh, particularly uh, the main theme of all what we have learned is that the uh, a metal or protein, the metal ion is present like a metal ion complex and the protein surrounds this and then provides a property that is required to uh, the to exhibit this may be probably can be seen to recapitulate what I said earlier uh, a metal of protein uh, is a protein plus metal ion and a metal enzyme a protein plus metal ion complexed plus function. So, this is what I wanted you to keep in mind is that the metal enzyme the metal center acts like a coordination complex, but not like the one which is present in the uh, test tube or usual uh, aqueous medium, but the properties have been very well modified. Uh, by uh, the presence of the protein because of the protein conformation, because of the protein hydrophobic, hydrophilic uh, various aspects of this. Then we have also looked at certain biological aspects related to this biomolecules particularly the proteins and the nucleic acid. Then we also have looked at a few biochemical processes like the uh, protein synthesis, metalloprotein uh, synthesis etcetera. So, in this particular class let us look at uh, the some coordination characteristics of these. The reason is that uh, you are going to look at uh, uh, the metal enzyme a part of the metal enzyme which is in the vicinity of the metal center as the coordination complex. Therefore, it becomes essential for us to look at a few details. I am sure most of you even those who are uh, studied the chemistry at 12th level must have studied certain coordination chemistry aspects, but nevertheless this particular discussion now will give you a recapitulation of what a coordination complex, what are the things that we need to remember in order to understand the metalloenzymes and metalloproteins. So, let us focus at the uh, slide shown over here as uh, a coordination complexes. So, obviously, the in, the in any coordination complex you have a uh, metal ion and the metal ion is surrounded by the ligands and that is what is basically is referred as a uh, coordination complex. Then the metal ion has certain charge or uh, certain oxidation state and ligands may have a charge may not have a charge either. So, therefore, the overall uh, charge is uh, defined by or determined by the oxidation state as well as the charges present on in the individual ligands. So, it is a summation of all this which I am sure you are all aware of it. In this particular example, we have a central ion is a cobalt, there are 6 ammonia and you know ammonia is a neutral ligand therefore, it is uh, charge is 0, the cobalt is in cobalt 3 plus the total charge is 3 plus as the cobalt oxidation state. So, this is a coordination number, this is a ligand, this is a metal center and uh, you take another example somewhere here shown over there cobalt with uh, 4 ammonias and 2 chlorides and 1 chloride outside this bracket. I will explain you this as far as the um, uh, kind of a coordination complex definition of the Werner you have those ligands which are directly bonded is called secondary valence it is not secondary coordination sphere secondary valence and those which are outside this is called primary valence. Okay. So, this will compensate the charge plus 1 it will be minus 1 and, uh, and this basically tells you the 4 neutral ligands to uh, anionic ligands and there is a positive charge therefore, cobalt is 3 plus. So, cobalt oxidation state is again 3 plus uh, and the total coordination number is 6 
and it has a one plus charge and then compensated by chloride ion outside. So, in this what we have seen the ligand binds to the uh, metal center. So, L to M this is ligand binds to the metal center. Ligand can be neutral as I said, ligand can be anionic. Okay. There is hardly any cationic kind of a thing, but there are some extended kind of a cationic may not be at the center where it binds, but uh, somewhere else. But such special cases let us not worry in this particular case, uh, in this particular course as I mean. Okay. So, you can have uh, a ligand bound to the metal by one connectivity, single connectivity is called monodentate or a ligand just like this may be connected to the metal center by a two. So, therefore, it is called bidentate or it could be connected by more than uh, two uh, tri, tetra, penta and okay, even polydentate. Okay. So, ligand can be monodentate, bidentate, tridentate, tetradentate variety of things. A ligand could be uh, neutral or anionic, uh, anionic kind of things. And some examples when you have some free time you can sit and look into these ones. These are all uh, monodentate that means they bind to the metal center through only one uh, connectivity, single connectivity. Okay. And uh, this is these are the some examples for bidentate. You see the nitrogen here of the amine, nitrogen here of the amine both of these can bind. So, therefore, when both of them binds it is called the bidentate. Even if though there are two centers and only one binds then it is still a monodentate, it is not cannot be a bidentate. Okay, for example, by uh, pyridyl there is two nitrogens if both of them bind together simultaneously it is a bidentate. Then you have a phenolphthalein kind of thing and you have other kinds of ligands too. You have uh, more dentates here one I mean another another three it could be tridentate. So, you could have uh, oxo, oxo ions. So, therefore, this can be and here you have a carboxylate moieties, four such carboxylate moieties and one nitrogen another nitrogen. It is a very famous uh, ligand uh, a famous chelator which is called EDTA. So, EDTA is a famous chelator because it is non selective and it can bind to many metal ions and chelate it. So, the highest uh, coordination number for a, a EDTA is 6 one here 2 3 4 then 5 and 6. Sometimes some of the carboxylate can act either as a monodentate or even as a bidentate or it can act as a bridging bidentate too. Okay. So, these are these are the some things which you need to learn. So, having such a kind of a connectivity to the metal center this will lead to different kind of a geometries. Okay. Let us look at this particular table with a little uh, you know focus. Uh, there are two coordination number, three coordination number, four, five, six, seven. There are coordination numbers beyond seven. Are they not possible? They are possible. They are mostly possible for lanthanides and actinides. And as you know, none of the essential element is a lanthanide and actinide. But we have some elements in 4D and 5D like molybdenum and tungsten. Therefore, we need to consider up to seven coordination, but not beyond. Therefore, for this course, I have restricted the table only up to the 7 coordination. This does not mean the coordination complexes exhibit only 7 coordination maximum that is not correct. Okay. Let us now look at uh, one by one the complex uh, geometry with the 2 is linear. You can also have bend okay, like in water H O H kind of thing. Uh, we are looking at the inorganic examples uh, A G C N 2 minus etcetera A G ammonia twice uh, plus. Uh, these uh, kind of things would give. Then trigonal plano HGI3 minus, then you have a tetrahedral, then uh, a four coordinated and another geometry of the four coordinated most commonly shown uh, by the uh, transition metals is square planar. So, some of the transition metals prefer to be square planar, particularly, particularly those of D8 kind of a systems would tend to give more of a square planar. This does not mean other uh, D configurations do not show that is not the correct uh, deduction. D 8s most often tend to show the square planar. The reasons are not explained here is that forms a, a hardcore inorganic chemistry explanations a coordination chemistry explanations in that. Okay. Uh, uh, so, tetrahedral and square planar when it comes to the 5 coordinated you have a trigonal bipyramidal you have a square pyramidal. Okay. So, there are 5 coordinate 
and both for the square pyramidal and trigonal bipyramidal. When it comes to the six coordinate, you can have uh, the octahedral, you can have a trigonal prismatic. Octahedral is nothing but trigonal antiprismatic. So, antiprismatic and the prismatic, there are two kinds of things there. Okay, so, the corresponding examples are given over here. And for seven coordination, then you have a pentagonal bipyramid. What does it mean? Five in one plane, the two one above, one below. So, 5 plus 2 that is 7. So, pentagonal bipyramid, okay. trigonal prismatic and uh, T, uh, example is uh, the uh, uh, T f 7 uh, 2 minus and then capped octahedron. So, the capped octahedron uh, uh, is, is an example where the primary uh, coordination type is the like an octahedron, one of the face of the octahedron is capped by a particular uh, ligand. Okay. So, these are different kinds of geometries and primarily I took the examples of the transition metals primarily. Okay. So, that they are of most important to us uh, in our uh, the bio inorganic chemistry or biological inorganic chemistry aspect. Whatever I said earlier in the previous slide can be seen bit more with more clarity here. Uh, the two coordination, then you can see that uh, kind of a thing, uh, one ligand, another ligand and the metal center, trigonal uh, with the metal with the three ligands and the square planar uh, with the ligand with the four, uh, with the metal ion with the four ligands and tetrahedral metal ion with the four ligands, but they are arranged uh, in uh, not in a planar, in a non-planar and which is very uh, close to the tetrahedral kind of a structure. Then you have a, a 5 coordinated, this is the uh, this 4 or square and the 1 is like a pyramid, it is called so it is called the square pyramid. Then you can see the example of uh, a trigonal bipyramid, it's, this is trigonal and this is the bipyramid. So, 3 in the row and 2 one above and 1 below. So, therefore, you have a so, you have uh, by looking at the previous one and this, let us continue with the 6 and 7 as well. 6 coordinated, as I said, we have uh, octahedral geometry. So, the kind of a polyhedral structure is also shown we have. Uh, and uh, ah, yeah, trigonal prism is also shown. This molybdenum example is shown over here, and this will come as an antiprism. So, regular octahedron will be a trigonal antiprism and this is a trigonal prism, both are 6 coordinated. So, one is MOCO6, other is MOS CH2, CH2S, this is a dithiolato uh, tris. So, therefore, 6 coordinations totally. Then you have a 7 coordinated system, uh, this is singly capped octahedron. So, you basically have an octahedron and to this octahedron one extra is added to a face. So, MOCN7 and continuation of this, this is pentagonal. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, these 5 ligands are in one plane and you have 1 above and 1 below and that is the pentagonal bipyramid. So, the polyhedron will look like this, rhenium uh, CN7. So, what did I talk to you now? Different geometries up to coordination number 7. Coordination number 2, uh, coordination number 1 has no meaning coordination number 2, coordination number 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Uh, uh, for 1 and 2 and 3, they are most of the often they are found as a linear and the trigonal planar. When it comes to the 4, you have a tetrahedral and square planar and when it comes to the 5, you have a trigonal bipyramid as well as square pyramid. When you come to the 6, you have an octahedron, you have a uh, prismatic uh, or trigonal prismatic. When you come to the 7, you have a uh, pentagonal bipyramid and you also have capped kind of a octahedron uh, all these kinds of uh, things are there. So, uh, so that means when a metal ion uh, is present in these uh, metalloproteins, it would be stabilized to into any of these geometries. So, the geometry is dictated both by the metal ion, its oxidation state as well as the protein surrounding both of these. So, please keep in mind that the geometries have an influence both from the ligand. In case of the biological inorganic chemistry, it is a protein and the metal ion means its oxidation state. Both of these are very important. 
So, uh, whenever we explain in future we refer back to these basics and at that time these basics will be of great use to you. So, that is why uh, teaching you these uh, basic concepts though you are aware uh, in your 12th and you know BSc etcetera still I am trying to bring a kind of a recapsulation as far as the coordination chemistry is concerned. Since we assume or we consider that the uh, metal enzyme the metal portion is like a coordination complex. Now, let us get into another aspect of it. We talked about a ligand can act as a monodentate, we also talked about a ligand can act as a, a bidentate or multidentate. Now, when, it, when a ligand can act as a bidentate and both the centers are bound together, what it forms? It forms a kind of a, uh, a chelate. Uh, let, me, let me show you what I mean by that. So, when you have a metal ion and you have uh, uh, let us say monodentate ligand. So, you have only this. Now, let me take uh, a metal ion uh, with uh, uh, two binding centers and let us say you have the nitrogen here and binding together. So, you form a, a, a cycle. So, this is also called uh, metal cycle and this is also referred as a chelate. This organometallic chemist will call this as a metal cycle and coordination chemist call as a chelate and when you have. So, now if I take another case where I have two ammonias. and I have ethylene diamine. So, do you expect any change in its uh, in its uh, stability? Say the metal ion same metal ion let us say same N plus is bonded to two ammonias here and uh, two amine moieties over here. So, the number of bonds from the metal to the nitrogen bonds M N bonds here or two. So, here also M n bonds or 2. So, do you expect any difference in the enthalpy of these two systems? So, there may be I am sure when I ask this in the regular class uh, some people said uh, no we do not expect much difference some people said yes that this will make a difference in this. Let me tell you uh, when you look at directly and compare there are two bonds of the ammonia two bonds with the amine it should not expect much as far as the, uh, the bond strength is concerned, but that is not true because it is forming a kind of a closed cycle. Uh, so, which is a chelate and uh, this gives a bit more stability than this molecule. If I have a metal with two ammonia versus I have a ma same metal ion with one ethylene diamine both the uh, nitrogens amines are binding, I would uh, have greater stability in found in case of the, the ethylene diamine complex. How? I will explain just in a while. So, uh, let us in the meanwhile look at this you have a, a, a copper with a tetramine complex. So, 4 ligands over there you can see and instead you can have a copper with 2 ethylene diamines will also be giving that. Now, if I take a copper ammonia complex and in react with 2 equivalents ethylene diamine what I would get? copper ethylene diamine base that is 2 uh, and 2 plus plus 4 ammonia. Now, let us look at a bit more carefully. Okay. Here what do you have on this side the left side of this you have one ion and you have 2 ethylene diamine molecules. Total uh, particles are 1 plus 2 3 particles here and on this side you have 1 and then plus 4 5 particles. So, 3 particles have turned to be 5 particles what has happened? So, it is like a class having 20 people versus a class having a 40 students. So, the teachers control on a 40 students would be obviously much less than uh, the his own control on a 20 students. So, therefore, more number of ions more number of uh, the uh, disturbance. So, it is basically called entropy. So, therefore, this particular reaction is guided by the entropy positive. What happens? The, in the product side more entropy and the reactor side less entropy. So, entropy is changed 
but enthalpy is not changed. So, because there are two uh, bonds of the m n uh, here as well as m n here. Therefore, you do not have any difference in the or no significant difference in the delta h, but significant difference in the delta g because of the difference in the delta s. So, therefore, you are going from 3 particles to your 5 particles. If you look at the particle uh, kind of a statistical thermodynamics, then you will understand if you study some physical chemistry there. But anyhow, right now you take it as granted that there are 5 particles generated out of the 3 particles, which means 2 particles are extra that means they are in random motion. So, therefore, they will contribute to the uh, entropy positive. Now, the same thing you can look at here you see that delta H value for the 4 ammonias minus 53 for the 2 ethylene diamines minus 56 not much difference here. But whereas, if you look at the delta G is minus 42.5 and minus 60 point let us say 5. So, 20 almost uh, 18 kilocalories difference there is about 18 kilocalories difference uh, in the delta G between a copper tetramine complex versus a copper bis ethylene diamine complex, but both these have got 4 copper nitrogen bonds. There should not be any difference if it is only thermal if it is only the enthalpy which is playing a role there should not be a difference. That means, some other factor other than enthalpy is other than entro, uh, entro, enthalpy is playing a role and that is called the entropy. Now, you look at the entropy term. So, entropy term is minus 35 uh, joules per mole and plus 13. So, going all the way from minus to plus. So, plus means more disturbance, more entropy, minus means less disturbance and less entropy kind of thing. So, therefore, the chelate effect is not really from a thermodynamically, uh, not really from the enthalpy driven one, it is an entropy driven one. So, it is an entropy driven one. So, though we do not expect when we look at uh, the two ammonia bonded to the same metal ion versus an ethylene diamine molecule bonded to the same metal ion, though we do not expect much enthalpy change, there is a huge entropy change, therefore, it is more favorable and such favorable effect is called chelate effect. So, that is what is the chelate effect uh, basically means. So, that means when a ligand is bound through 2 of its, 3 of its or 4 of its ligating centers, you can expect such a kind of a uh, thing to happen. Okay. One another very important aspect that I need uh, uh, you to see in these ones is, uh, is, the, is as follows. Okay. We have looked at the different uh, 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 geometries uh, in this, you know that the different geometries will uh, will split the energy levels of the transition metal ion to differently. So, any transition metal ion okay, the uh, transition uh, metal ion has uh, uh, d orbitals. So, we need to consider mainly the d orbitals uh, primarily. So, the d orbitals when you put in a, uh, in a in a field or in an, in an atom. So, in an atom the d orbitals or degenerate or degenerate. Uh, okay. But, when you put this d orbital the, the, the transition metal ion uh, in the field of of ligands then the field of ligands will influence on the transition metal ion and that will uh, split the d orbital energy levels which are having uh, equal energy. There are 5 d orbitals are there and these 5 d orbitals are uh, degenerate and these are called d x y, d y z, d z x, d x square minus y square d z square. This you can see from any textbook and you will understand that. All of these in a free uh, uh, atom and uh, they are having the same energy. But if I put some ligands, so some of them will go up and some of them will go down. Okay. 
some in decrease in energy and increase in energy. So, this is the energy gap. So, this energy gap is dependent on this energy gap is dependent on uh, various factors. So, the uh, d orbital splitting or energy gap is dependent on on a the uh, type of ligand or type or nature of the ligand and b uh, nature of the metal ion uh, in terms of oxidation state and N D level etcetera and C depends on the nature of the geometry, the type of geometry type of geometry. So, there are various things are there. So, therefore, the d orbital splitting is dependent on from let us say 1 if you put an octahedral field. Okay. So, this will uh, split into okay. so d phi a free ion d phi an octahedral field of ligands and this is referred as octahedral splitting, octahedral field splitting, octahedral field uh, splitting. Okay. So, this octahedral field splitting obviously is dependent on uh, is dependent on the type and nature of the ligand, nature of the metal ion, oxidation state in which n level n is equal to 3, n is equal to 4, n is equal to 5 etcetera, uh, n is equal to 3 d, n is equal to 4 d, n is equal to 5 d or the type of the geometry and all of these aspects are involved. So, therefore, so how does that matter? This matters because the electrons either may pair up into the um, lower energy level or may occupy these two and as a result of that you get a situation of uh, either a low spin kind of a situation or a high spin kind of a situation. Both of these important in the biological and organic chemistry because the metal ions uh, uh, will have either a low spin or a high spin configuration depending upon what kind of ligands are bound there, what kind of a field being created by the protein. Uh, what kind of a, a charge that we have in the metal ion, what is the oxidation state, all these kinds of things are very important and that will reflect on the magnetic properties of this. Now, so in an octahedral case let us look at and try to compare these uh, uh, things. Let us look at for a while uh, the, the kind of a ligands will uh, affect affecting this uh, field is given over there. So, this is referred as a spectrochemical series. So, the way that these delta O splitting occurs is dependent on the as I said nature of the one of the thing is nature of the ligands. Now, you see this is I minus B R minus C L minus F minus that means in the initial thing you have almost halides In the next one you have hydroxo, oxo, water etcetera oxygen ligands. Then you have a pyridine, ammonia, ethylene, diamine, bipyridine these are all nitrogen kind of ligands phenolphthalein. Then you have NO2, CS3, C6H5, etc., which are the carbon based ligands, CN minus CO. So, this delta O splitting is very least for the all the uh, for the halides and the most for the cyanide and carbonyl ligands. So, this is very uh, very much influential on these uh, ones. So, the halides, so delta O. Um, order the delta O order is 
the halides will split less than the oxo ligands, than the nitrogen ligands and than the carbon ligands. So, how do we explain this? Okay. Can we explain this based on the electronegativity principle? So, several of the uh, students in the class have agreed on this in when I ask question in the class and several have uh, very few have disagreed with this. So, in fact, it is those few who have disagreed with this or in right. So, you can explain this using the electronegativity only to a partial extent not to a complete extent, but you have to invoke something called the pi acid or pi sorry base uh, characters of this not the sigma sigma bond is already there bond is already present. So, what we are looking at is only the pi characteristic. So, I will be explaining in the next class what is how an acid, how a base. We are looking at uh, the Lewis acid and Lewis base. Lewis acid is the one which has got a low lying orbital which is ready to accept low electron pair and uh, Lewis base is the one where you have a uh, pair of electrons and the pair electrons uh, can be easily donatable. So, this can be explained based on the, uh, the uh, pi um, bond uh, pi acidic uh, kind of a character or pi basic kind of character. So, therefore, pi bonding characteristics are important as compared to the sigma bonding rather than just using the electronegativity thing. So, you can see that very clearly that you have a weaker field on this side and stronger field on this end. Okay. So, you will have with these uh, with these ligands like halide you will have a less uh, delta O value and with these ligands carbon based ligands you will have a uh, greater delta O value in this one too. So, uh, I think in this particular lecture what I have talked to you is about the basic characteristics of the coordination complexes, what how one define a coordination complex, what is a ligand, what is the charge, what is the oxidation state, what kind of ligands favor uh, the kind of a binding geometries that we have and then uh, we have looked at the uh, crystal field splitting uh, which I talked to you just now for case of the octahedral and the octahedral uh, uh, delta O splitting it depended upon the nature of the ligands. It also depends upon the nature of the uh, metal ion oxidation state of the metal ion and whether it is in a 3D series, 4D series, 5D series all of these will influence. If you go from 3D to 4D to 5D keeping the ligand same you have a large split of the energy is also there. If you go from 2 plus to 3 plus to 4 plus again the delta O will increase. On going from uh, halides to the oxo ligands to nitrogen ligands to carbon ligands also the delta O increases. So, all of these are important in understanding the uh, magnetic characteristics and the electronic characteristics of the metal ion present in the metal O enzymes. They can form uh, low spin or high spin, they can become diamagnetic or paramagnetic. Uh, thank you very much.